Yeah! yeah. Video, video games. games! Video game intros. Pretty sick video game intros. The art of the video game intro involves a whole lot of things. Perfectly encapsulating what kind of experience you're about to get into, selling on the style and visual aesthetics that the game is going for, and so on. The bopping. The rocking. The bumping. The humping. Giving you just enough previews of the plot to make you excited while not being spoiled. Or perhaps foreshadowed in a subtle enough way that you only figure that out upon rewatching the intro several times. Or maybe it's just a really cool montage. Let's talk about some SICK video game intros. Not necessarily the beautiful, serene, or emotional, but just the most SICK by my own metrics. Let's go. Let's start off with a series that everyone knows. But do you know all the intros in it? Pretty much every game in the Persona franchise rocks a sick intro. But which of them are the sickest? From the PS1 title's slow, psychedelic, and symbolic openings, to the modern title's preference towards style and not so subtle symbolism, we got pretty good pickings here. All of these, except DP4G and, and P5R, are pretty cool, but the coolest is probably the Persona Q intros. Crossovers are a natural pick for sick intros. If you're bringing the cast from a bunch of games, or two to three in this case together, you might as well create a nice animation to go along with it. The first PQ intro is certainly a bit more organized and obviously symbolic, and iconic enough that there are several parodies of it that incorporate other franchises in place of the characters. Not to mention the accompanying theme, Maze of Life, is up there with the very best themes in the Persona franchise. This kind of actually really cool how the spin-offs managed to incorporate all the main vocals of each game, which really hits its peak with Persona 4 Arena Ultimax's break out of, and Persona Q's sequel, Persona Q2, incorporating Persona 5's Phantom Thieves into the roster. Compared to PQ1, this cast definitely takes a greater spotlight for the intro, which is reflective of the game's story, to be fair. The protagonists of the three, technically four, titles featured here get plenty of time for themselves as we see them doing plenty of cool shit, but with a bit more of a cinematic flair for a cinematic setting. The start of the intro even has Joker lip-syncing, somewhat poorly the lyrics, which looks a lot cooler than it should, despite not quite matching up as well as it could. But yeah, we've got all the vocalists here, with an all-star cast of Yumi Kawamura, so Shihoko Harada, Lin, and Lotus Juice. Coming together, seeing the biggest crossover we've seen in the franchise. I can only hope a possible future arena and summon will have as good of an intro, if not better. But speaking of fighting games, we need to go deeper. These tend to have pretty great intros when proper effort is put into them. You might be expecting something from fighting game animation pros, Arc System works to be put in here. However, aside from the Blaze Blue series' various openings, which are pretty cool but not exactly sick enough, to be discussed here, most of Arxis's openings consist of montages of various assets and moves created for other things in the game's intro. Considering how good a lot of Arxis games look, this is totally fine, and Guilty Gear Xrd rocks some of the SICKEST intro themes in the business. But I'm looking for something else here. And who could it be other than the old guard themselves, Capcom? Even though Capcom's fighting game division has had its ups and downs in the past few years for all kinds of things, it did manage to put out one of the best fighting game intros in recent memory for the opening for Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. SF5 has this whole sportsy, shiny studio aesthetic that's present in the whole of the game, but especially in the character select and match transition screens. This was made even more prominent in Arcade Edition, which added an extra helping of gold plating and lights to everything. It's like a real sport! Anyway, this is relevant because the opening for SF5V takes this theme and runs with it, being a massive showcase to the game's entire roster up to its third season. Everyone gets some spotlight, literally and figuratively, as they demonstrate what they're capable of and who they are. This includes some nice callbacks to older games in the SF first, which is Ryu doing a ridiculously well animated and painful Shoryu with a Sagat, and Cody breaking a brick wall just like the intro to the original Street Fighter. The music is also really catchy and perfectly captures the energy of the showcase of the world's best fighters. The goal of a fighting game intro should be to introduce the player to its cast while managing to look sick at the same time, and this opening does that in a way most other fighting games could only dream of. It's just a shame Capcom didn't update this intro or include a new one entirely for the game's Champion Edition. Imagine seeing Gil and Poison in this beautiful 60fps montage. We already mentioned crossovers before, and knowing how famous Capcom is for its crossover series, of course it would have some SICK 
crossover fighting game intros. In this case, we're looking at the intro for Ultimate, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Seeing America's most famous comics brand battling against a bunch of iconic Japanese video game characters has never been so epic. Seriously, this intro is basically a bunch of dioramas accompanied by epic music, and still manages to be more cinematic than the entirety of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And I kinda like MVCI! Just like SF5AE, we see essentially the entire roster in a cool montage that showcases all of their skills in an all-out war that we're only seeing a snapshot of. Every character demonstrates their abilities, with the pairing shown being incredibly fitting. Seeing the demon slaying duo of Dante and Ghost Rider battling it out, Phoenix Wright and Deadpool participating in equal amounts of fourth wall breaking, and just everything else? It's a Marvel and Capcom fan's dream made into reality. When it comes to epic crossovers, this is about as good as it gets. Or at least it would be, if Capcom didn't happen to be a part of another intro, and the one that made me want to make this video in the first place. Namco Cross Capcom may not be a fighting game, but hot damn if it doesn't feature one of the greatest Dream Team character rosters of the early 2000s. Namco and Capcom are both friends and rivals on the level of Sega and Nintendo, so it only makes sense that the inevitable crossover would result in one of the SICKEST intros ever made. Or two. Yeah, we're not just covering NXC, but also Project Cross Zone. And who better to animate an intro of this magnitude than Gainax, directed by the man himself, Hiroyuki Imaishi. If you're familiar with his other works such as Pro Mayor Gurren Lagann, the style is recognizable almost immediately. Gotta get the best studio to make the best intro for your crossover. Oh, and the opening theme was composed by Yuzo Koshiro. You know, the guy who did this. And this. And this. We start with a lot of pretty typical visualizers to prepare us up before the absolutely transcendental lyrics kick in, as we get a view of our main characters looking into the distance, followed by some of the many Capcom and Namco All-Stars gearing up and getting ready to go, including Arthur and Klonoa of all characters, with Arthur getting a pretty clever reference to his damage sprite in Ghosts and Goblins. Then we get the drop in- Ooh man, I don't know who either of these characters are, but hey we got some Soul Calibur peeps like Mitsurugi and Taki embracing typical Gainax tradition. We've already seen this a couple of times before, but it's really cool how this intro groups together a lot of characters with similar abilities or occupations, such as the Fantastical Knights and Sword Dudes from earlier, and the ninjas in this scene. And of course, another Gynax tradition, with several of our more high-tech members blasting into this giant spaceship, and an absolutely killer shot of Cosmos, Mega Man, Strider, and Captain Commando blowing shit up. The tone settles down for a bit as we see this Valkyrie crying about the Darkstalkers cast? It's kind of a weird place to show them all, but the art still looks sick. And of course, we've had swords, and ninjas, jetpacks, and lasers, but you can't have Namco and Capcom without their best brawlers lined up and ready to kick your ass to next Tuesday. And Regina from Dino Crisis. Rest in peace. More intense action shots as we have another classic Gynax vs. Trigger style fight with some of our original characters. They all seem to be down for the count and almost defeated, but their hearts still beat as the music ramps up before they pull the strength to get up and combine all of their powers together for one giant fuck you laser. I really like the shot of Raging in particular, like, damn, that's badass. And he's hella pissed. And that is... Nanko Cross Capcom. But they clearly weren't done yet, as we got a spiritual successor to this intro in the form of Project Cross Zone. Similar visuals here with the flat cars on black background, but yeah, it's pretty clear that Studio Trigger was responsible for this one. Actually being one of their earliest projects if you consider they were only a year old when the game came out. And okay, yeah, yeah, some original characters before one of the most iconic shots of fighting game all-stars with Akira, Jin, and Ryu showing off their moves. Oh yeah, and Sekka's here too with a lot of their more obscure franchises, but it's still pretty cool to see them. We've got Capcom's Resident Devil Men, the robots, more fights, Space Channel 5, and lesbians as a giant Gruenwagen-style mech stares down at a destroyed city. 
Similar to Namco Cross Capcom's intro, we have a lot of the brawlers quickly appearing as they demonstrate their moves. But we get some more iconic shots with all the sword wielders brandishing their blades and the gun guys rotating and shooting around, followed by some of the more unconventional fighters. Once again, the spirits of the three companies' characters encourage our protagonists to defeat the bad guy, before ending off with another trigger as hell group shot of the cast. Overall, PXC's intro isn't quite as sick as NXC's, how could it? But it still provides enough iconic shots to be just legendary enough. There isn't really a lot to say about PXC 2's intro, as it's more of the same and while the characters are more detailed, the animation takes a noticeable downgrade in style due to not being done by Gaia slash Trigger. But hey, Phoenix Sprite fighting monsters and Goro Majima running with anime girls are still pretty amazing scenes, and the shot of the Fire Emblem duo here is pretty sick as well. The music is a bit more generic but more hype than PXC's one at least. Still not anywhere near NXC's though. Okay, maybe we've toned down the hype a little bit too much, so how about we end off with another legendary crossover series? Tell me, do you like it simple and clean? Cause we're not talking about the original, or even KH2, not even KH3 as cool as they are. No, we're taking a look at Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Now it is kind of hard to show the intro in its full glory as it had some elements that were much better when seen on the 3DS, like the entire thing being rendered with full 3D, which looked really damn good and is probably the best opening of any game on the system that was in 3D. Kingdom Hearts interests tend to be a retrospective of past games in the series, and 3D is no different, acting more like a montage of the first 10 years of the series since this was an anniversary game after all. The intro music isn't original to this game as the orchestral version of Simple and Clean has been around since the very first game, but it's using this intro so nothing short of wonderful. Gage 1 gets covered with the inciting incident of the series as everyone gets separated by the evil Ansem. Then Jenna Memories is kinda skipped over really quickly with just a shot of the end of the stairs and Omni representing it. As Sora falls asleep, Roxas is born, and is immediately presented with Xion pulling a keyblade at his face, as memories of good times pass. But those days are gone, as Roxas has to fight his former friend Axel, but oh wait shit, we gotta recreate another one of the most iconic fights in the series, as Xemnas' legendary final tag is recreated in stunning CG. The music sticking with each hit of the Keyblade makes it so much more impactful, oh my god! But now, Xehanort is back and everyone must come together as Mickey summons the remnants of the Birth by Sleep crew and Roxas before everyone draws their blades and we see our title. God damn. Every single time I booted up this game, I made sure to rewatch the full thing as it is just so damn beautiful, especially in 3D. But I am glad that a full HD version does exist, same with the openings of the PS2 games in the series. Now there's a ton of other openings I could cover too, and even more opening themes from the The sixth style of the and the beauty of, like, all of these. I'm not sure if I'll continue to cover more, but man, video games are pretty sick. Thanks for watching.